What is up, everybody? It's Cody with Blood Money MMA Bets, and I'm back with another full card breakdown. This is for UFC 308, Ilya Taporia versus Max Holloway. And man, it's going to be a good card. Not only do we have that great five round title fight, but we also have the five round fight between Robert Whitaker and Hamza Chemaev, which is just going to be pretty crazy. At least for a couple of rounds, it should be super crazy. And um, just a bunch of other really good fights on this card. Um, there's going to be some good betting spots. I already have three bets put in. If you're looking to find where I put my bets, I post them on Instagram. I post them on Twitter. I post them on my Patreon. All the links are in the description, but that's where I post all my recaps, my bet slips, um, just all my extra content. So if you want to check any of them uh, three places out, that's where you'll be able to get my extra content. On YouTube, I pretty much stick to the breakdowns, and then I do my um, – uh defend your unit show with my co-host johnny k picks on wednesday night which is a super fun show where we just give our best bets and best jokes on each fight but if you can before i get into all this stuff can you please hit that like button for me um hit the subscribe button if you haven't if you want to get more of my videos and more of my content um it's super free you just got to hit that subscribe button hit the like button like i said and um drop me a comment drop me a w drop me an emoji anything to help the algorithm to get your boy back in it but um, yeah, man, like I said, this is going to be a super cool card. Um, I'm going to be doing this card instead of doing it on Tapology. I'm going to be doing it on a new thing called NextMMA.com, which is a super cool site that has um, so much fighter information. I'll show you when we get to the um, to the backgrounds, but it has so much fighter inf information, so much cool stuff on it. Uh, check out Mr. Nice Guy MMA on Twitter. Um, he's the one that runs it and he puts up tons of information, tons of cool stuff. Um, all you can go there and get all the different cappers information, um, their links, their all their, their videos, all kinds of cool stuff. So it's super cool. But like I said, yeah, other than that, check us out on Wednesday nights for Defend Your Units with me and my boy Johnny K Picks. And let's get right into this fight card. Uh, this is, like I said, UFC 308. And the first card fight that I have is Kennedy and Jokowu versus Chris Barnett. Um, Kennedy and Jokowu is coming up to heavyweight for the first time in his UFC career. He's 32 years old, six foot five with an 83 inch reach. He's fighting Chris uh, Barnett, who's 38 years old, five foot seven with a 75 inch reach. And um, Kennedy's 12 and five. Uh, Beast Boy is 23 and eight. And this should be a pretty good fight. Um, Kennedy is a big dude at light heavyweight, and he's going to be even a bigger dude at heavyweight. Um, he's got powerful southpaw boxing. We've seen him hit dudes with big shots like Carlos Allberg and people like that, get him out of there. And he actually has pretty good wrestling, too. You've seen against Carl Robertson where he was able to um, land some takedowns, uh, beat Robertson up and get him out of there, and he kind of khabibed him. But, um, you've also seen him fights where he cannot take a punch all that well. You know, He got knocked out by uh, Dustin Jacoby. Then he took the loss to... Uh, Ovin St. Pru by decision, which was definitely a bad look. Had kind of like the uh, fluke knockout loss to Dawoon Jung, where he got hit them, got hit with the elbows and got put out early in the first round. But like I said, then you see him take beatings against guys like Carlos Alberg, come back, get the win. I think he's going to be more durable at two or at heavyweight. I don't think he's going to have to cut near. You know, he's not going to cut anyway, and it's going to help his durability um, a ton because he's a big dude trying to get down to 205. Uh, Chris Barnett, man, he was supposed to fight Junior Top a couple weeks ago, um, and then they rescheduled it for this week. And you know, it's he, they're not giving him really good fights, but there really aren't no good fights in the UFC for you know anybody really. Uh, Chris Barnett's a Taekwondo heavyweight man. He can do some spinning wheel kicks. You've seen on John Vellante, uh, he was able to um, uh, take uh, reverse. Uh, Collier, Jake Collier, get on top of him, finish him in the second round. And then, you know, he's been held up against Cage by Martin Boudet and uh, kind of got lit up by Brendan Rothwell on the ground in the second round. But um, he's a tough dude. You've seen the, the, the um, beating he took against Jake Collier and was able to come back and get the win, like I said there, once Collier kind of gassed out. Collier dropped him and stuff in the first round. In this fight, I, I got to go with Kennedy and Joku. He's going to be so much bigger. I think he can land the way bigger shot standing, and I actually think that he could come out here and do the same thing that he did to uh, Carl Robertson to Chris Barnett. I think he could come out here and wrestle Barnett just being so much bigger. You know, and Barnett's 38 years old. Um I got to go with Kennedy here. I have to go with Kennedy. So give me Kennedy and Joku. Um, he, he's, he's a finisher. So I'm going to actually say that he does finish um, Barnett. I'm going to say he finishes Barnett in the second round of that fight. Next fight. Um, I got my, my fight card a little out of order as, as you know, sometimes, but um, this is what it is. Next fights in the men's Bantamweight division. We got Saeed Nurmagomedov versus Daniel Santos. Uh, Saeed Nurmagomedov is 32 years old, uh, five foot six with a 70 inch reach. Um, actually, he's five foot seven, 
And then uh, Willy Cat is 29 years old, uh, five foot seven with a 67 inch reach. Sorry, I was having trouble reading that. But um, man, this is going to be a really good fight. You got two really skilled fighters here. Saeed Nurmagomedov has amazing kickboxing. Um, excellent movement, crazy spinning kicks, um, crazy knees to the body. Uh, he's got excellent front chokes, as we've seen how we got Muin Gafarov. Uh, he lost to Jonathan Martinez. I thought he won that fight. But um, the, the front choke he hit on Sedyukov, uh, Kakramanov was sick, too. He's got the nice win over Douglas Da Silva. Um, he's just a well-rounded fighter. He's got good wrestling, but he usually uses it defensively. He's a Dagestan guy. Um, uses it defensively to stand up where he just uses movement and then just, you know, power shots, power spinning stuff, power uh, leg kicks, everything, man. And he's just well-rounded and he's got pretty good cardio. He'll slow down a little bit as the fight goes from all that movement, but he's still he's still good. Um, Willie Catman, uh, Daniel Santos has good Muay Thai. He's a shoot box guy, uh, pretty reckless, comes in throwing kicks with both legs. Obviously good Muay Thai, throwing punches. Um, reckless. Not all that technical, but he does have power. He does have major aggression. He's always coming forward. Um, he's got pretty good offensive and defensive wrestling, and he's got good scrambles on the ground. Uh, I don't think either one of these guys are really going to be able to land takedowns on each other, and they, they both got good scrambles if it does hit the ground. So I think this is going to stay striking, man. I got to favor Saeed Nurmagomedov in that. He's just going to have way cleaner technique. He's going to hit harder, in my opinion, as far as just one shot. And um, I just think that he's going to be so much faster. So he's going to have way better technique. Um, Santos is going to be coming forward, throwing big shots. And I think Saeed's going to hit him with big, big counters, um, be able to hurt him and uh, possibly get a front choke on him, like a club and sub or something like that. But I'm going to say Nurmagomedov by decision and uh, in a really good fight. But just that speed and that technique, man, is just going to be too much, in my opinion. Next fight is in the men's middleweight division. We got uh, Ismail Nardiev, the return of Ismail Nardiev uh, versus Bruno Silva. Or, uh, Silva. Um, let's see. Uh, Nardiev is 28 years old. So I'm getting used to reading this. Nardiev is 28 years old uh, with height of 72 inches. 12, 48, 60, 72. So he's six foot tall even. Yeah, I, 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 that's only I got to get over that on this website, to be honest. But he's six foot tall. He's going to be going against Bruno Blandata um, Silva, Blindado Silva, who is uh, 20, 35 years old, six foot with a 74 inch reach, man. And this is weird. It's weird to have Nardiev back here. Um, this is his second run in the UFC. He's one in three in his last three fights, but um, somehow he got the call up here. And it's not even short notice that I could find. But um, yeah, he fought in the UFC, he had a decent little run, um, beat uh, um, Michelle not Pereira, but some Perales, and then lost the round tree, uh, ring, Ren country chance, ring country or whatever. And, uh, Sean Brady went out of the UFC, had a couple losses, had a couple wins, but he's got powerful, um, kickboxing. He's got super powerful leg kicks, um, pretty good offensive and defensive grappling. I mean, Brady was having trouble taking him down, uh, Ren country. That dude's a big freaking, uh, wrestler and he was able to get him down, um after the first round in that fight but uh yeah he's just a big he's a kickboxer he's fast he's got um good power uh 20 like i said he's still a young dude i mean when he was in the ufc when he was younger he was only like 23 years old like i said it is some good learning experience but he, he took some losses and then he took losses outside the ufc good um kickboxing suspect chin we just seen the dude uh vadim kutsi that that was um brutally finished on the uh, contender series a couple weeks ago he was able to knock out nardiev and nardiev was whooping him and starting like look like he was going to finish him and he gets hit with one shot and goes out um gets a decent win you know in his last fight with a guillotine in, in a minute 10 but like i said it's crazy that he's even back in the ufc bruno silva powerful muay thai from both stances um has super power in both of his hands uh really good kicks he's he's reckless though man he gets hit a lot um but um, usually he can take it and come back and give guys even bigger shots. He did it against Brad Tavares, was not able to do it against Brendan Allen. Had a good fight against Shara Magomedov, who you know is a beast. And then the Weidman fight was just ridiculous. He just kept getting poked in the eyes. Um, it was a pretty good fight other than that. But, man, the Gerald Mearshart fight looked terrible. I think Alex Pereira stole this man's soul, dude, because he was on a four-fight win streak going into that fight, and he had a great record. And then um, Pereira, he – put up a hell of a fight but Pereira just gave him so much damage in that fight that man he hasn't been able to take really good shots since then but he's got really good Muay Thai um he throws a ton of volume he's he's uh he's got good power I'm taking Bruno Silva I don't know why Nardiev is the the favorite here because the the dude um has lost a way lower competition I know Bruno Silva is a little older but he hasn't been looking bad in his fights even against Shara man he put up a good fight 
Um, Brendan Allen, he had Allen hurt a couple times. Allen's like a top 10 guy, but give me Bruno Silva here, man. I'm not taking Nardiev. I think Silva can outstrike him. I think this fight stays standing up, and I think that uh, Bruno Silva hits harder than Nardiev, and I think he gets him out of there. Next fight is in the men's bantamweight division. We got Fareed Basharat versus Victor Hugo. Um, Basharat is 27 years old. Five foot eight with a 71 inch reach. Victor Hugo is 31 years old, five foot seven with a 72 inch reach. And man, this is going to be a good fight. I mean, Basharat's 12 and 0, Victor Hugo's 25 and 4. Basharat has excellent kickboxing. I didn't think his kickboxing was as good as it was, but he looked good against Taylor Lapalus where because he, he wasn't he was able to get his grappling going because he's got phenomenal gra grappling. But Taylor Lapalus has amazing takedown defense and get up game, so he was getting up a lot and they had to strike. And he was looking good against Lapalus with the kicks, really good kicks, better in his better in his boxing, but he has decent boxing. But I really like his kick game. But what he really has is grappling, man. His wrestling is excellent. His jujitsu is excellent. He's very heavy on top. He passes your guard. Um, he's constantly looking to land some ground and pound and then sub you out if he can, like he did Kletzen Rodriguez. Had a good fight with Demond Blackshear. And um, he's beat up a lot of people. Sometimes, you know, like on the contender series, he's going to decisions with guys I think he should finish, but he, he's a grappler, you know, and he's just looking, he's got good fight IQ. He's going to take what you give him. Victor Hugo is a tough fighter, man. He's um, very well-rounded. He's dangerous everywhere, standing on the ground. He's got good power in his hands, nice uppercuts. Uh, he's got good knee bars on the ground. He's got good um, knee bars and uh, all, all different kinds of heel hooks. That's what he had is the knee bar heel hook. He hit the knee bar on the contender series over uh, Eduardo Torres caught. And it was a pretty good fight back and forth. He had this good fight over Pedro Falco when um, he got that on. He, he got Falco on short notice and he looked pretty good there. It was still a close fight, but Falco was a pretty good fighter. Um, in this fight, I'm taking free Bashrod. I think that he can do fine, just fine standing when these guys are standing by uh, landing some kicks. And I've seen Victor Hugo um, held up against the cage. I've seen Victor Hugo taken down and controlled. And I think Bashrod can do that. And I think Bashrod can do it safely and not get submitted. So uh, give me Fareed Bashrod. And I'm going to say it's by it's going to be by decision because Victor Hugo is very well-rounded. He's very good. And um, I don't I don't really see him getting finished by Bashrod. <laughs> Next fight is in the men's lightweight division. We got Maitebek Orobai versus Mateusz Rambeski. Um, Mateusz Rambeski is 31 years old, 5'7 with a 66-inch reach. Um, Orobai is 26 years old, 5'10 uh, with a 76-inch reach. So you'll see Orobai is going to be 3 inches taller and have 10 inches of reach on Rambeski. Rebeski, man, he's good. He's tough as hell. He's he's just like little for the division, man. He's got super short reach, but he's powerful. He's explosive, powerful leg kicks, good power in his hands. He's got good wrestling and he's got good jujitsu. You've seen against Diego Ferrer in his last fight. He was finished with like eight seconds left, nine seconds left in the fight. Um, it was a good fight back and forth. He hurt Diego uh Ferreira in the first round, tried to get him out of there, couldn't get him out of there. And then Ferreira, you know, was able to stop the wrestling and stuff in the second round. And by then, Rebeski, Rebecca, you know, he's so his striking speed goes down, his power goes down. Um, everything goes down after that that second round. He even did it against Nick Fiore, and uh he was able to get Loic out of there pretty early. I mean, he got him out of there in the second round, but he was he was so much faster, he was just landing big leg kicks, got Loic out of there. Um but he's a tough fighter. He's well-rounded, and he's freaking dangerous. But, man, he just slows down. He doesn't wear damage well either, man. Once he starts getting hit in the face, his eyes swell shut, and he just gets – he, he don't wear damage well. I don't think he takes damage well. Oral by man, this dude is a tough mofo. He's got KO power in both of his hands. You've seen on the regional scene where he's able to land some knockouts. Um, He's got excellent wrestling, excellent cardio, excellent jiu-jitsu. You've seen against Euros Medic. Uh, he took some big shots early in that fight and was able to just get the wrestling going and was able to choke Medics out in the second round and dominated him. And then pretty much dominated Elvis Brenner in that fight. Came on the third round, slowed down a little bit. Um, Brenner's a dog, but uh, Brenner was able to land a takedown and stuff for a little bit. But then he was able to reverse him, um, land some more good shots, got the unanimous decision. This is a, a pretty tough fight to call, but I'm going to take Oral by. I like his durability. I like his wrestling, and I really, really, really like his cardio. And I think he's going to go be able to fight Rebeski anywhere this fight goes. It is going to be a very tough fight early on, especially in the first round. Um, so Oral by is going to have to stay on his P's and Q's and not get hit with nothing big. But if he doesn't, he should win this fight. And I think that he should finish Rebeski in that third round. I'm, I'll be looking at... Um, a third round submission maybe just third round finish is good enough because you know he could submit a more kale next fight is in the men's light heavyweight division we got um aibo aslan versus rafael circuaria 
Um, Aslan is 28 years old. He's six foot three, right? Yes, yeah, six foot three with a 78 inch reach. Uh, Raphael is uh, 33 years old, six foot four with a uh, reach unavailable. Uh, you see, both these guys are dangerous. Um, uh, uh, Ebo has finished all 13 of his wins, all 13 by KO. Raphael's finished uh, 10 of his 11 wins, and um, they're both big dudes that go for the finish. Ebo, um, not much to say. He's a powerful striker. He's got good counter striking. He's got good long punches, man. Um, throws hooks in combo. And when he does that, he lands on guys and gets them out of there. I said by 13 KOs, his only loss was to Anton Turcali, where he slowed down, gassed out in the third round and got finished. And uh, even against they, they rematched in the UFC, he slowed down in that fight um, a ton, but he didn't give up. His takedown defense looked a lot better, and he was able to get the third round finish. Uh, Raphael, man, this dude, big dude, throws heat, good stance switch striking uh, for a big dude. He's throwing good front kicks, um, spinning stuff, all kinds of stuff, man. He, he, he seems pretty good. He definitely wants to be a striker. It is hard to find a, a lot of good tape on him. He's fought some lower-level guys. Um, but in this fight... I'm, I mean, this could go either way. I wouldn't bet this fight either way. I'm going to take Ebo just because I like his experience. I like his power, and I think that he he can catch um, he can catch Rafael coming forward because Rafael is always coming forward, throwing big shots. I think he, that that'll go good with Ebo's game plan where he can sit back and just land a giant counter on it. Man, he's got real real power in his hands. Next fights in the men's middleweight division, we got Abis Megamedov versus uh, Bruno Ferreira. Abis Megamedov is 34 years old, six foot two with a 78 inch reach. Uh, Bruno Ferreira is 31 years old, uh, five foot ten with a 72 inch reach. So you see, Abis is going to be four inches taller with six inches of reach. Abis Megamedov, he's well rounded. Seen in his last fight, he actually used some um, grappling against uh, Warley Alves instead of just going nuts and uh, throwing him throwing a, a ton of heat and, and slowing down. Um, didn't look all that great. He looked a little gun shy against Kyle Barallo, and then he got beat up by Strickland. But he had that nice front kick to Dustin Stolfo's face. He was able to get him out of there in 19 seconds, and that's what he has, man. He has good wrestling. He has pretty good jiu-jitsu. He has okay cardio, and he has really good – he has decent power in his hands, but he has really good kicks, especially front kicks up the middle to the body and to the head. And um, he's a tough dude. He's pretty durable, you know. Um, Sean Strickland just beat him down. He kind of gave up, but he I've seen him get knocked out one time by uh, – Sadi boy soya whatever and uh or louise taylor that's who it was in pfl back in the day but um yeah man this is gonna be a crazy fight because then you got bruno ferreira who's just a reckless crazy dude switching stances throwing power with both hands um he's got crazy head kicks he's got good flying knees you see him against phil haw he's got good judo pretty good wrestling and all that um, this is a crazy fight. It's a tough fight to call. I have no faith. I don't really have much faith in either guy to be honest, but um I'm just going to go with Ferreira. Here's why. When I watch Abus fight, he's he's got good power. Like I said, he's well-rounded, but he slows down just a little bit, but so does Ferreira. But like against Worley, Alves, and Barallo in them, like Abus, even against Luis uh, Taylor, if you go watch, he doesn't back up well under pressure when he's going back. And he's a real tall dude, and he's big, and he just kind of backs up and leaves his head open. And Worley Alves was able to land a couple shots on him. Kyle Barallo dropped him late in the third round. And um, I think he's doing If he does that with Bruno Ferreira, even if he comes out grappling heavy right away, when Ferreri gets up, man, he's going to be throwing heat. And um, I just think that at, at some point he can catch Avis. But I'm not confident on it because Avis could just come out here and I'll grapple him and Bruno Ferreira could be gassed in, in the in the second round. So not confident, but I'm going to just go with Ferreira. I'm going to say that he is able to land a big shot because the dude's dangerous, man. And, and that's what he did to Stolfus. Stolfus came out, landed some shots on him, took him down, was doing okay. And then, man, as soon as they stood up, uh, Bruno started landing some big shots. And he looks like he's gassed, but I think he just kind of like, like, that's just how he fights, man. Within one minute, he's kind of seems slow, but then he explodes. So, give me, uh, give me, give me the more, the more proven guy. Give me, uh, Bruno, um, Bruno Ferrer, Ferrer. Not the more proven guy, but the more dangerous guy. Uh, next fight is in the men's welterweight division. We got Jeff Neal versus Rafael dos Anjos. Um, Jeff Neal is 34 years old, five foot 11 with a 75 inch reach. Rafael dos Santos is 39 years old, five foot eight with a 70 inch reach. So you see, Jeff Neal is three inches taller with five inches of reach. Jeff Neal is an excellent southpaw boxer. He's got power in both hands. He's got an excellent jab. He's got an excellent left hand, straight left, right down the pipe. You've seen it against a lot of people, but like Vicente Luque, Ponzinibbio, um, even Shavkat. He had Shavkat hurt at one point. I, some say he beat Ian Machado Gary. 
But um, he does have good wrestling. Uh, some of the best takedown defense you're going to see, man. Nobody's really just came out and beat him by wrestling. Shopcott couldn't even get him down. Um, looked amazing in that. And then he's got real power in his left hands. He's super explosive. And uh, he's got good cardio and good toughness. Rafael Dos Anjos, he's got good boxing. He's got really good wrestling. And um, if he can out grapple you or take you down and, and – um, beat you up on the ground. He's definitely going to do that, but he's 39 years old. He's slowing down on the feet. And at 170, man, his wrestling just ain't what it is at 155. I don't think Rafael Dos Anjos is going to be able to get Jeff Neal down. Um, I think Jeff Neal keeps his standing. I think he lands the way bigger shots. Uh, Dos Anjos is really, really freaking tough, so it may be hard to get him out of there. But if anybody could, it's Jeff Neal just beating him up over three rounds, especially if he keeps it standing the whole time. So uh, give me Jeff Neal. I'm really confident in him. And um, I'm going to take him by third round or decision because I just think if he just keeps it standing, man, he can uh, let that, the uh, damage just build up, build up, build up, kind of did, like he did against Vicente Luque and just get him out of there. Next fight um, is Renat Fakhradinov and Ruzi Boyev is out. Carlos Leo is in. Carlos Leo's uh 21 and 5, and he's actually a tough dude. But Renat Fakhradinov, um, he's a, he's a, a good striker. He's got good power in his hands. You've seen him drop Kevin Lee. Um, he's got excellent chokes. He's got really good wrestling, and that's what he wants to do. He wants to wrestle you down. He wants to beat you up, hold you down. If he doesn't get much resistance, he's got three good rounds of cardio. If he gets a ton of resistance, a good amount of resistance, like against uh, Zaleski Dos Santos and Nicholas Dalby, um, man, he gets really tested because he tends to slow way down in the third round, and he's not even uh, – he's like – 100% in the first round, he's like 70% in the second round, and then he's like 35% in the third round, and that's just how he goes. But, um, yeah, he's fighting Carlos Leo, who's a southpaw Muay Thai guy he's from Brazil. He's got good power in his hands. He's fought in the PFL. He's fought all over the place. Um, he's got good power in his hands. He's got really good leg kicks. He actually has pretty good takedown defense and a really good get-up game. Um, he, he was already training for a fight, too, which uh, makes this a, a, a pretty fair fight. But I'm still going to take Fakhradinov. I do think that he's able to take the Brazilian down. I think he's able to get control time and um, do enough damage and stuff to where uh, Leo is able to hurt him. But man, if he can't get, if he if he does it where he can't get Leo down at all in the first round, which I highly doubt. But by the second, if he can't land the takedowns, man, Leo has a really good chance because he's very dangerous. He's tough and he does have good cardio. So uh, we'll see. I don't have any faith in that. I haven't seen no lines or nothing. So um, we'll, we'll see what that is. Next fight is in the men's middleweight division. We got Shara Magomedov versus Armin Petrosian. Uh, Magomedov is 30 years old, uh, six foot two with a, a 70 inch reach, 73 inch reach. Um, Armand Sarukian is 33 years old, six foot three with a 71 inch reach. Um, <clears throat> so you see, everything's pretty much about even. Uh, Shara Magomedov, man, is an excellent Muay Thai kickboxer. Uh, seems to uh, mix in a lot of stuff, a lot of different striking. Um, techniques but he's got some crazy kicks man this dude can throw like 100 kicks in a fight which is crazy uh with both legs his lead legs so fast man he's throwing question mark kicks all different kinds of kicks going from the legs the bodies to the head my only problem is he's, he don't really throw with power man he's not really hurting none of these people he fights really close with people um even mikhail Ol and jaychik he fought really close with he fought really really close with bruno silva and uh antonio trucali even won the first round against him and then the second round he well he came in on short notice in the third round he ended up getting beat up but um yeah, he's he's tough. Uh, his takedown defense looks like it's improving. Of course, he's fighting Mikhail and Jacek, you know, and Antonio Tricali, but it looked a little better against Bruno Silva. But he's a he's a striker, man. He's going to be throwing a lot of kicks. Things I don't like about him is his boxing. Like his hands are pretty good, but they're not that good. And when he's throwing all these kicks, <clears throat> he gets hit a lot, man. He really does take some shots because his hands are down more when he's throwing all kicks to the head, all going around. But um, he took a lot of shots against Olin Jacek. He took some against Tricali. He took a bunch against Bruno Silva. He's fighting Armand Petrosian, who's going to be taller than him but have less of a reach. But, man, Petrosian is a world-class kickboxer. Um, he's fought, like, you know, literally world-class kickboxing fights, won some, lost some. He's looked really good in the UFC, especially against other strikers when he just fights, like, Christian Leroy Duncan and Gregory Rodriguez. Well, Gregory tried to uh, grapple with him a little bit later in the fight. But, dude, he's a beast in his striking, man. He, he's got excellent movement, and he's got excellent counter-striking. You've seen against Christian Leroy Duncan, who kind of has the same kind of game as Sharon Megameda, bouncing around, moving, just throwing a lot of kicks with okay hands. And you've seen, man, uh, 
um, he was just able to to counter all of my uh, Christian Leroy Duncan's kicks with his own kicks and then ended up hurting his legs because he's moving around. And then Petrosian's hitting him with power leg kicks with both legs. And then Petrosian has excellent boxing too, man. If this is just going to be a striking match, I think that Armin Petrosian's way more proven than Shar Megamedov. Even though Megamedov's a beast and obviously he's great at striking, he just hasn't fought as many people like Petrosian on a world stage. So I'm taking Petrosian here. I think that he's going to be able to counter a lot of Magomedov's kicks with his own kicks, and then I think he has better boxing. So I think he's going to be able to land the better shots on the feet. I think that um, it's kind of a stupid matchup for the UFC to put Petrosian versus Magomedov. It's going to be fun for us to watch, but I feel like, you know, like they're kind of putting Magomedov in with a, a little bit better of a striker. So we'll see. It's going to be a hell of a fight. But, uh, yeah, man, give me the underdog in that fight. Next fight is in the men's light heavyweight division. We got Magomed Ankalaev versus Alexander Rachik. Magomed Ankalaev is 32 years old, six foot three with a 75 inch reach. Alexander Rachik is 32 years old, six foot four with a 78 inch reach. So you'll see Rachik one inch taller, three inches of reach. Age is exactly the same. Magomed Ankalaev, well routed Dagestan fighter. Um, he's got excellent offensive and defensive wrestling, but he's not a traditional Daggy fighter like Khabib, where he's just going to wrestle you. He's actually got phenomenal world class kickboxing, excellent leg kicks, excellent punches. Head kicks are the, probably the best part of his game. They're super fast, super crisp. Um, just crazy, just fast southpaw striker. Only things I don't like about him is he's kind of tit for tat. You know, he's going to hit you, you hit him. He's not really um, uh, throwing a ton of volume. He's not looking to go out there and dominate you. You know, he's just going to go, he's going to strike with you. Like you, you've seen it even against Johnny Walker and all them too. He finds the finish. But with Bl John, Jan Blahovitz, you know, that was a very good fight. But um, like Tiago Santos, Volkan Ustamir, Nikita Krylov, he takes what you give him, you know, and um, he fight very, he, he's not going to go out of his way. Um, to get into danger and just getting a slugfest. But man, the dude is, is good. He's probably going to be fighting for the title next. Um, but he's fighting Alexander Us uh, Rasik, and he's a freaking big, like Magomed's a huge favorite over Rasik. He was an excellent kickboxer himself. He's got good offensive and defensive wrestling. Like, I don't think this fight's really going to the ground. I think it's going to be a striking match between two really good kickboxers. I think it's going to be a low output, boring ass striking match. Don't think that this would be like Rasik versus, um, Yuri, this is going to be more like Ratchet versus freaking uh, Tiago Santos. Or uh, um, the Jan Vlahovic fight was kind of terrible. The Os Vus Volkan Ustamir fight was terrible. Um, the Anthony Smith fight was horribly slow. He just was taking him down and holding him down. But, um, yeah, in this fight, man, I'm going with Magomed Ankalaev. I'm going to say that he gets the win by decision, but I think it's a really, really, really close fight. And if Ratchet's able to hit him with some big shots, drop him or something, and steal some rounds – he could definitely win this fight. I mean, Ratchik's a top top five guy, and Megan has just so low output. I don't, I, I don't think these guys will each land thirty five significant strikes. I don't. Well, let's say forty. I don't think they each land forty significant strikes in this fight. I think they both stand there and looking at each other. It's another boring fight, and then Megan ain't alive. Is wondering why he gets skipped over for like exciting fighters. Give me Magomed. Um, next fight is in the men's <clears throat> featherweight division. We got Lerone Murphy versus Dan Ige. Lerone Murphy's 33 years old, five foot nine with a 74 inch reach. Dan Ige is 33 years old, five foot seven with a 71 inch reach. So you see Lerone Murphy's two inches taller with three inches of reach. Lerone Murphy's a, a good, well rounded fighter. You've seen in his last fight against Edson Barbosa. He looked really good. He looked really, really well rounded. Um, he's got fast boxing. He's got pretty decent pop in his right hand. He he doesn't have any finishes in the UFC actually from his hands. Um, he he need um he need uh Maquan Americani to get that KO and then he ground and pounded Ricardo Hamos. But he doesn't actually have any finishes with his hands in the UFC. But he's very fast. He throws a good amount of uh, volume. Uh, hits pretty hard. And he's got good offensive and defensive wrestling and good cardio. Um, you see, though, man, he kind of got checked in that Gabriel Santos fight. That was very close. I kind of thought Santos won. But um, he ate some big shots. He kind of slowed down. And he, his grappling didn't look all that great. Um, I don't think he's actually... Well, Dan Dan Ige, I don't I don't know if Leron Murphy would be able to out wrestle Dan Ige. Most guys that want to beat Dan Ige, that's how they're trying to do it. Uh, Dan Ige's got phenomenal boxing, KO power in both hands. His jab and left hook are awesome. Just I mean, they, he hits hard, and then his straight right or right hook, like he hit Feely with, um, like he hit Damon Jackson with the left hook. He hit Damon Jackson with the left hook, hit Feely with the straight right, and then it was on uh, Gavin Tucker. With the straight right so i mean he's got power everywhere man and uh he, he's got some good wins he's got some good losses in the ufc um most of his losses were like the mitchell 
Ivalev and um, even Chan Sung Jung, they all wrestled him. Josh Emmett threw a little wrestling in too, and we're able to get some control time. Um, but man, his hands are so fast. He's got some serious power. And this is going to be a seriously good fight, man, because um, I think it's going to be mostly a boxing match. And um, if there is any grappling, Lerone Murphy would be the one getting the takedowns. But I don't know if he's able to just hold Dan Ige down. Dan Ige's high level black belt. Uh, Dan Ige's got serious durability, never been finished in his career. And he's fought Diego Lopez and all the top dudes. Um, actually, in this fight, I'm going to take Dan Ige. I think he keeps this fight standing. I think for the most part, they're boxing, throwing some leg kicks. I think Dan Ige uh, is way more durable, and I think he hits way harder than Lerone Murphy. Like, Dan Ige puts guys out cold. Lerone Murphy's never finished anybody with his hands in the UFC like that. So, um, And he's never really finished anybody good. Like, him beating Edison Barbosa by unanimous decision, Dan Ige did that when they was both kind of in their prime. You know, Barbosa's probably still about 35, but uh, Ige was like, you know, 29. So um, now Barbosa, when, when Lerone did it, Barbosa is like 39 years old and took three more years of damage and stuff. But um, give me give me Ige in this fight, man. I think that Ige can actually uh, land the harder shots. He may be able to drop Lerone Murphy, hurt him. Um, I think Ige is better than Gabriel Santos at this point. And I thought Santos kind of beat Murphy. But give me Dan Ige as the underdog pick. Next fight is a five-round co-main event. Um, in the middleweight division, we got Robert Whitaker versus Kamzat Chamaev. Robert Whitaker's 33 years old, uh, six foot two with a 74 inch reach. Kamzat, or wait, yeah, yeah, right? 12 to 4, 36, 48, 60. Yeah, six foot two. I didn't know Whit Whitaker was six foot two. That doesn't make 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. Oh, yeah, bro, that. Yeah, I don't think that's right. Because he's not, I don't think he's six foot two. I think he's like six foot. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, uh, with the 75 inch reach, Hamzat Chemaev is 30 years old. He's got a 75 inch reach. I think Hamzat's one inch taller in this fight. But man, this is gonna be such a good fight. I'm happy as hell that it's a five round main of a five round co-main event instead of a, a three rounder. We're gonna find out some serious questions, answer get some uh, questions answered. Robert Whitaker, man, has been in the top three of the middleweight division you know for probably like the last seven eight years he's a well-rounded fighter he's got serious power serious boxing i love how he darts in with his striking using like a karate background darts in with his strikes and that that adds more power to it that's uh he's able to hit it ground man with that with that right hand gets him hurt chasing him around ends up finishing with that sick ass uppercut goes toe to toe with paulo for three rounds look good in that got beat by drikas you know and and, and that happened but that was when everybody was still underestimating drikas thought they was going to come out and just dominate him early and try to get him out of there and then you know we we see where that goes drikas is a junkyard dog destroyed vittori uh hamza chabayev man has and and he's and robert whitaker's fought some good wrestlers and he's got good takedown defense he's got good offensive wrestling himself and a uh, pretty good jiu-jitsu i mean you know we haven't seen nobody take him down and just submit him we never really seen people just take him down and, and that was the way to beat him he's getting beat by strikers like israel adesanya and drikas two plus c um but yeah man he, he's got good offensive and defensive wrestling it's not going to be good enough in the first round of this fight because hamza chabayev has world-class wrestling this guy has um, pretty good striking. He has power in a straight. He, he switched stances, and he's got power in a straight right, man. That's what he got Gerard Mir shot out of there with. Uh, you've seen him hit uh, Ikram Alaskarov with his own uppercut on the regional scene before he got in the UFC and knocked him out cold. So he's got power in his hands. He's got really good wrestling, and he's got freaking um, good jiu-jitsu. You've seen his last fight with Kamaru Usman where um, he came out in the first round, dominated Usman, who Usman was on like five days notice, up a weight class, you know, and he's, he's older himself. But uh, he came out, he dominated him in the first round, was able to take him down, take his back, um, hit him with some good ground and pound, had him in some bad spots, rear naked chokes and stuff like that. Uh, Usman was able to survive and then kind of took over in the second. And then in the third was very close and might even have won that third round. Uh, Hamza was able to land a takedown in the third, had pretty good timing on him, but I felt like um, – uh, Kamaru did more damage with his hands in the third round, though. But, um, man, we're going to figure some stuff out in this fight, you know. And, and it kind of worries me with Rob Whitaker. Um, the only – is that when his last fight with – or with Paula Costa, like, them dudes were hitting each other, putting so much damage on him. He was kind of slowed down in the third round. It's not like he was, like, gassed out or nothing, but he definitely was slowing down, but he took a lot more damage in that fight. This fight's going to be crazy because you know Hamza's going to come out. He's not going to come out and just, you know – stick and move on the outside and change his whole game plan and up he's going to come out he's going to run across the ring he's going to get Whitaker down like that's just a fact he was able to get Camaro down pretty easily he's going to get Whitaker down um the question is does he finish Whitaker in that first round and then if he doesn't finish him in that first round you get four more rounds 
of uh, fighting, man. And I, I'm I'm going to say that he doesn't. I don't think Hamza is Anthony Hernandez, man. I think he comes out. I think he does have good jujitsu. Um, if he's going to win, I think it's in the first or second round. He's going to choke out Robert Whitaker. I don't think he, he ground and pounds him or nothing. But I do think that if 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 Hamza wins, he's going to win by sub. But I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Robert Whitaker, the more active guy. Hamzat's only got one fight in two years. He's always hurt, pulling out of fights, having all kinds of stuff going on outside the ring. Robert Whitaker is just there, man. He's fighting constantly in and out of the ring against the top guys in the world. Give me Robert Whitaker. I say he survives a crazy first round where he's got to, you know, protect himself, not get choked out. And then I think by that second round and definitely by the third round, he's stopping all takedowns and beating up Hamza. And if um if uh Usman would have had two more rounds in that fight. He 100% would have beat Hamza on four, you know, like four or five days notice or whatever it was. So give me Robert Whitaker, man. Um, I'm just not sold on Hamza yet, man. He doesn't fight enough. Main event time, dude. We got uh, Ilya, the Mat El Matador Taporia versus Max, bad motherfucker Holloway, man. Ilya Taporia is... 27 years old he's five foot seven with the 69 inch reach max holloway's 32 yes you heard that in his prime 32 years old uh he's five foot 11 with the 69 inch reach so the reach is the same but max is gonna be four inches taller uh Ilya taporia has got some of the best boxing you're gonna see in mma um probably could have boxed as a pro too pro boxer um he hits hard with both hands he uses angles he uses crazy foot move work and angles coming in he does he's not moving from you with footwork like say a volkanowski but he uses angles and footwork to come in and he'll work the body throw three three hooks you know start at the body two hooks come up top um with real power like i, I he's knocked out four dudes cold as hell um in the featherweight division man and and um who's it damon jackson Volkanowski, uh, Ryan Hall, and who was the other one he put out? Freaking call. Oh, Jai Herbert after Herbert head kicked him. Um, and he puts these dudes out cold, and when he hits them, man, they go out, you know? And, and his forward pressure is phenomenal. He's got excellent takedown defense, excellent off – pretty good offensive wrestling. Like, he was kind of having trouble taking Jai Herbert down and holding him down, but that was after he got head kicked and almost died. But the dude's a freaking beast, well-rounded savage. He's got the attitude. He's got the swagger. He's kind of an asshole, but I mean, somebody that, you know, does what he does with his hands, he's probably pretty damn confident. He's fighting Max Holloway, who's the bad uh, BMF, man. Just won it off Justin Gaethje. Knocked him out in the last 10 seconds in one of the most spectacular knockouts in UFC history. Um, Pointed to the ground. You know, they both started throwing, and he was able to land the bigger shot, and it was crazy because he was already winning anyways. He probably won, you know, Maybe all four of them rounds. I think he got dropped one time in the, the fourth, so maybe he lost that round. But um, tough dude, tough boxing, excellent combos, excellent movement, excellent striking defense, throws a ton of volume. His kicks are getting better too, man. He was throwing tons of body kicks against like uh, Arnold Allen, throwing tons of body kicks and spinning kicks. The spinning kick he landed on Gage, he changed the whole fight in the first round. Two seconds left, he spin, does a spinning kick right to the body when Gaethje's coming in, but Gaethje ducked down, hit him right in the nose, and broke his nose. And I think that changed the whole fight, you know, a ton of it. But I still got, you know, would have had Max winning, but um, changed the whole fight, man. Uh, dude, I, I don't. this fight is so tough to call because, like, Holloway, this fight ain't going to the ground. Holloway ain't wrestling to Poirier ain't getting Holloway down. Um, it's going to be a striking match with two of the best strikers in MMA. You know, we for a long time, we've said Max Holloway has the best boxing in MMA. And now you got Taporia coming in with uh, some of the best boxing with serious power. Um, dude, this fight's so hard to call. It's so hard to call. Um, I don't even know. It's so hard to call. Uh, the line's crazy. The line is freaking crazy. Uh, I think Tapori is what minus about like 260 at the moment. I think Max Holloway is about like plus 200. And uh, yeah, man, it's hard to go against Ilya Tapori, but I don't care. I'm taking Max Holloway. I'm going to say that he's able to box with Tapori, land body kicks, box with him, land his own shots, take some of Tapori's shots. I think that Tapori throws really, really, really hard all the time and does have excellent cardio. But I think that um, he slows down a little bit after the third round, as we've seen against Josh Emmett when he started to use some grappling later on in the fight. And we know Josh Emmett's durable, but he's, he doesn't have the boxing, the volume, the cardio, and all that that uh, Max Holloway has. So I think that the first couple rounds are tough. I think Max Holloway can win one of the first two rounds, right, or one of the first three rounds. And I don't think that Ilya knocks him out, even though Ilya is the hardest-hitting 
fucking small guy outside the heavyweight division that I've ever seen. But I think that Max is able to use the boxing and stuff to work uh, work with Ilya, not get knocked out, win one of them first rounds. And I think Ilya, from throwing all that heat and just trying to knock Max out the whole fight, I think he slows down a little bit. And I think Max does what he does and starts taking over because, like, the way to beat Max has never been to just really outbox him. Like, Volkanovski, uh, I get it, Taporia beat Volkanovski, but Taporia to beat Volkanovski just walked him down, hit him with big shots. And Volkanovski, you know, is like playing Matador. Volkanovski against Holloway, like, because Tapori is going to have a speed advantage. These dudes at 145 do, but Max always um, is able to take the damage, give the damage back, and when they both are on, when they're at the same speed, he's going to put a bunch of damage on Tapori. He's not going to finish him, but I do like Max by decision. Um, Volkanovski used to just leg kick like Max, run around, leg kick him, not let him hit him, leg kick him. That's not what Tapori is going to do. Tapori does have phenomenal leg kicks, but he's going to be coming forward the whole time. And um, I just think that Max is going to be able to take the damage that Tapori is thrown out with landing his own damage. Um, and then I think that Max can take over and, like like I said, the fourth and fifth round, just land bigger shots and um, on, on a more tired Tapori and put a volume on him. And um, I think Max, at 32 years old, can get this win. I think Ilya can beat a lot of people in the world, especially um, even at, at 155, where he's going to be able to take him down and this and that. But, like, in just a boxing match, even though Tapori is so good, I'm still going with the baddest man on the planet, Max Holloway. I hope he gets his title back, and then I hope he just, like, goes up to 155 and starts fighting up there. Like, you know, basically just gives up the 145 title. Because after, if he beats Ilya, who else is he going to have to fight? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I, I know this is a big underdog take. I know everybody's going to be mad, and Ilya could definitely win this fight. But I just don't see him out boxing Max for all five rounds. I see him landing some big shots. I think he gets tired, and I think that Max is able to uh, to get, win this fight. I can't wait for this fight. It's going to be so freaking fun. Um, I hope everybody liked that. That the, the uh, me using the um, nextmma.com site, man. Check it out, nextmma.com. I'm telling you, they got some good stuff. If you like underdog fantasy or underdog doing over unders on like uh, uh strikes landed takedowns um fight finishes and all that check out underdog fantasy link is in the description and um on a, for for blood money and you can get a deposit bonus up to 250 dollars if you use my um my promo code so uh check that out i appreciate everybody checking out my stuff everybody please before you go out the door if you listen to this hit that like button hit the subscribe button leave your boy a comment man i'll, I'll be back to do some more of these videos i'll see you guys